praise the Lord. Brethren, we thank God for the opportunity to come together tonight to talk about healing. My prayer is that as we go into the word of God, even before we finish speaking, the healing power of God will have located you and whatever be the ailment, whatever be the issue, you will be healed tonight in Jesus' name. I want to first announce that um, if you have not listened to the anointing service that we did um, the last time, I want you to please, that was on Saturday last week, I want you to go over it fully participate in it because that anointing oil will be anointed via that service. That's the sole purpose of that service is to anoint the anointing oil. Each service has its purpose. Tonight we're going to use the anointing oil for our healing. So if you have not done that, please stop this now. Go and finish that. Pray the prayers. Do everything that needs to be done so that um, God can answer our prayers. I always tell us that obedience is better than sacrifice. And God called the year 2020 our year of obedience. So please let us always obey so that we don't have to spend so much time and energy doing sacrifice that will not work. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this healing service. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your might. We ask that you step in tonight. You touch our feet. You touch our body. You touch our soul. You touch our spirit. And in the total package, everyone will be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to take the handcuff for this message from four verses in the Bible. I'm going to start with Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I want us to understand that the key word I want to pick from this verse is healing all that were oppressed. When Jesus was around, Jesus was not healing some that were oppressed. Everyone that came to Jesus was healed. Everyone. The only people that were not healed in the time of Jesus were the people that never came to Jesus. Have you not wondered when Jesus went to the man that was by the pool for 38 years and Jesus told him to pick his bed and begin to walk? Have you not wondered that there are other people around him at that time who saw him walk and they kept looking at the movie till Jesus left? They never came to him. Have you not wondered when the blind man shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me? He wasn't the only blind man around that side. What happened to the other blind men? They never came to Jesus. Everyone that came to Jesus, that saw Jesus as the number one and only source of their healing, get healed. One of the reasons why healing today is looking as if it's impossible is because you have choices. As long as God is not the number one choice and only choice, you don't get healing from Him that easy. When I first know that in Nigeria, you don't put a senior university as your second choice. Once you put them as your second choice, you are definitely not getting admission from them. They want to be your first choice. Then you put a lesser university as your second choice. Same goes with God. He cannot be the second choice for your healing. You are trusting for an operation 
that God will hear you after the operation. The Bible says, I will meet, I will answer your prayers according to the idol of your heart. So you're going to get healing after the operation. But when you trust God that, no, He's going to heal me, and I'm not waiting for the healing in 17 days' time, I'm not waiting for the healing in one year's time, I'm waiting for the healing now, then God will step into the situation and heal you now. I remember the case of a sister who had who went for um, uh, checking in the hospital and um, she discovered that there was a lump in her breast and uh, the lump was being advised to be cancerous and she called and said, ha, I'm having a lump in my breast all of a sudden and, and we told her that in the name of Jesus there is no lump there go and have your bath there is no lump in your breast in the name of Jesus. She went and came back and testified that the lump disappeared. If you see God as your final place, then God will heal you in the name of Jesus. Another verse I want us to see is in John chapter 14 verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. And Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater than this because I am going to the Father. So Jesus has told us that in Acts 10 38, He healed all. Now, He said we are going to do greater than He did. I am very sure we all know that when Jesus was around, he needed to send messenger to people for them to be healed. So the, many times people come to him, they stand in front of him and they are healed. But sometimes he sends people and says, go and tell them and they are healed. But in this age, we've gone beyond that. We are doing greater works. Because now we can talk and send healing here and he hits you where you are. I remember one of the prayer meetings we were having, somebody was in either in UK or in Canada or in America, one of them, and she was reading the prayer points with her glasses and her eyes were staining her. And a prophecy came in the prayer meeting and said, there is somebody here, your eyes is healed in Jesus' name. Immediately she saw that she took the glasses and threw it away and began to see that is praying in Nigeria posting a prayer in Nigeria and somebody in another country, in another continent, got healing immediately. So greater work than Jesus did, he said we will do. So a lot of miracles and healings have been happening without us seeing the person. Ninety percent of the miracles that have happened in this prayer group has been miracles that happened while we were praying online. Because, of course, we don't have so much of physical meetings. But we pray every day in the year. So God has been healing people right from the prayer group without seeing them physically. And I pray that tonight, it will touch you in the name of Jesus. So is there greater works that he did, shall we do? In the time when Jesus was here, there was no HIV. But I remember the time when we were praying in the group and somebody has HIV and God just told us that there is somebody here, you have a sickness that has a long name. That sickness disappears now. Your sister received it, she went for test and HIV has disappeared. That is God moving to solve things that Jesus did not solve when he was on earth. I pray to you that God will heal you tonight, even at the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. I pray that even as that now that we are still talking, you will begin to feel the sensation in your body and you will discover that you are healed in Jesus' name. Another part of the Bible I want to talk about is Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. He says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what Jesus did yesterday, Jesus can do today, and Jesus can still do tomorrow. A man was blind. Jesus touched him, and he began to see. In this age, God can open your eyes and you see. 
I've had somebody that came to the group and uh, we were praying and God told us that two brand new kidneys are being released to somebody now. And a sister that her kidney has been spot, she cannot do exercise, she cannot do anything. She is so tired. God gave her new kidneys, she received strength and she went ahead to get pregnant. That is God at work. He can heal anything. The same way it changed organ in those days, the same way it can change organ today. The same way it caused Lazarus that died to come back to life. It's the same way it can cause things that are dead in your body to come back to life. I remember there was a day I was busy, I was praying, I was not with my phone. Members of the group, somebody died in their midst. And they tried to call me and they couldn't get me. And so they decided that if we cannot get MD, we can get God. And they joined their hands together and prayed. And the dead person came back to life. That is God at work. The same thing, the way he rose Lazarus from the dead before, is the same he can raise you from the dead. The same way he healed somebody's left before, is the same way he can heal your left. The same way he changed parts before, is the same way he can change your parts. It is the same. He has not changed. And that takes me to the first verse, which says, that's in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. All power has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. So, if your sickness came from the earth, God will deal with it on the earth because Jesus' power is greater than that, whatever it came from. If your sickness came from the sky, from the moon, from under the waters, Jesus still has powers to return it back to where it came from. So, whatever the issue is, Jesus has the ability to solve it, to handle it, as long as you have made Him. Your final choice. One day I was praying in my house. I've not taken my bath, I've not brushed my teeth. I was putting on uh, what I used to sleep the night before. And God said, Rush to the auditorium now and um, go and pray. So I entered my car, rushed into the auditorium to go and pray. While in the auditorium I was praying, a man and a woman entered. The man was really holding the woman. She was so strong, so tired. So he held her little by little into the church. And God told me that that's the people I brought you here for. Go and tell them that that sickness has an expiry date. I look at the way I was dressed. I look at them. They would think I'm mad. So I left them. I kept praying. And God told me, you are wasting your time. I didn't bring you here to pray to me. I brought you here to talk to these people, to pray for these people. I, I was telling God, it's not possible. I'm not dressed in the way I can go and talk to people. They used to tell us that the way you are dressed is the way you be addressed. So if I go there now, I'm not looking good. I'm not looking good. Uh, so after they prayed for about two or three hours, they left. And um, the Holy Spirit told me that if you do not tell these people, I will deal with you. So I entered my car. Oh, I felt better that, okay, since I'm inside the car, I can now park by their side. At least they will listen to someone that is inside the car. So I drove and blocked them and told them to wind down. And I faced the woman and said, I don't know your sickness. I don't know what you are facing. But God said I should tell you that this sickness has an expiry date and it will expire. I collected their numbers, gave them my number, and I left. added them to the prayer groups that we can be praying together. About two months later, I got a testimony in the group, and I, I almost got angry that who is telling that? I didn't know anybody I prayed for that has this kind of sickness. The person testified that she has serious sickness. There was a hole in her stomach, and that hole in her stomach, excreta was coming out of that hole. So instead of excreta coming out of her anus, it was coming out of the hole. I don't know the scientific explanation for that type of sickness. But after that discussion we had that afternoon, they were on their way to see Jesus, and after seeing Jesus, to go and see the doctor for dressing. So the doctor will move the plaster that is there, clean up the place, and cover it again. 
By the time they got to the hospital and they opened it, they discovered that miraculously flesh has covered the hole and a scripture started coming out from the right place. When I first saw the testimony, because I never knew what the problem was, I only knew what God asked me to tell them. I was confused and I was like, I hate people telling lies. What God did not do, don't say God did it. Only to discover that, yes, it was somebody I met actually that has the testimony. Now, God that did that one is still the same God that can do yours today. No matter the name of the sickness, no matter how long the sickness has been, it has nothing to do with the power of God. The power of God can silence any sickness. And to the glory of God, there is almost no kind of sickness that we have not heard the testimony in the group. Some weeks ago was when we heard that somebody had a cancerous tumor and the tumor disappeared. So there is nothing that God cannot do. How about members that were suicidal? They felt like committing suicide. They came to meet Jesus and the joy of salvation took over the suicidal thoughts. We've had sisters that have broken marriages. They thought the marriage is over and the healing power of God came and healed the marriage. We've had people who were not doing well in school, who never knew they can pass an exam, but the power of God came and healed their brain and they passed their exams. We've had various testimonies here of the various things that God has done. Majority I cannot remember. And the God that did that, the same Jesus that did theirs, is alive today. And I like giving my own testimony because when God wanted to show me healing, it started with me. I used to be a malaria patient. I'm always admitted to the hospital twice a year where I would spend three to four days in the hospital. I had cancer. I saw not cancer. I had an ulcer, serious ulcer. I had always having malaria and typhoid. Every three, three months I must treat malaria and then twice a year I treat typhoid. I was living on drugs per se. Until I came to know Jesus and the power of his healing. <laughs> and I told him that he is true that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Then I can stop using drugs. And in 2015, January, I told God, I am not using drugs again. And for five years, brethren, I have not used drugs. I have not had any reason to use drugs for any sickness. Oh yes, malaria came, typhoid came, ulcer came. All of them came to attack me to test my feet, but I stood still and said, since God said he's a healing God, then I'll be disappointed in his Godship if he cannot heal me. And here I am. Five years working, stronger than before, better than before, and I have not used drugs. And the same God who healed me is here to heal you. And He cannot just heal you, He can give you divine health. He has moved me to the face of divine health now, so I don't fall sick again. I can get tired and I need to rest. And after that, I'm back to my feet. He has moved me to the face of divine health. And I pray to God that God will not only give you divine healing tonight, He will move you to the face of divine health in Jesus' name. Oh, God just said I should tell somebody now that you are feeling some things in your body. You are healed already. You are healed already. Begin to do the things you cannot do because you are healed already. Healing is already going on because healing is with the Holy Spirit. It is not MD. It's not Brother Femi that will give you healing. I have nothing to do with it. My job is to explain to you so you can have faith. Then God will do His work. And as I'm speaking now, He has started doing the work already in the lives of so many people. Healing is already taking place seriously tonight. So I want you to. Decide this evening that you are going to surrender everything to God. You are going to make God your number one source of healing. When God is number one, never fails. It's when you put him second choice, he doesn't move. So, 
And again, like I said in the morning, the healing is the bread of the children. Sometimes non children get crumbs, but crumbs is never enough. How many of us want to go to a party? Everybody is eating food and they give you crumbs. Nobody wants crumbs. So if you have not given your life to Jesus, I want you to go on your knees wherever you are and tell him, I surrender all to you. And if you have always trusted in drugs and made God second choice, I want you to apologize to him tonight. Father, I am sorry I have not made you my number one choice of healing. I have trusted drugs more than I trust you. I trust doctors more than I trust you. Doctors are fantastic persons. They are good. But your number one source trust for healing should be God. So if you have not trusted God enough for this while, or you even believe that God cannot do it, that's the biggest fallacy. Go on your knees now and begin to apologize to God and say, God, I am sorry. I am very, very sorry. I am very, very sorry. I am very, very sorry. Heal me. I put my trust that you are going to be my healer. And if I have not accepted Jesus Christ before, go to him and say, God, I am sorry. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my body to you. I surrender my problems to you. I surrender my body to you. I surrender my joy to you. I surrender my happiness to you. I surrender everything I have to you. I give everything to you. Just continue to pray to God. Ask Him to forgive you. Whether you've not accepted Jesus before, whether you've trusted God more than you trusted God, in both cases, ask God, ask God to forgive you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. We're going to go into a session of worship now. I want us to worship God with everything that we have. Then prepare your oil because when we come back from the worship, we'll be dealing with the healing. And I trust God Almighty. He will heal everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let's go into worship now. Cause some trust in chariots, some trust in the horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Some trust in their kings, others trust in their skills, but we trust in the name. Woo! When the arm of flesh will fail them. We will still be standing tall. Cause we trust in the name of the Lord. Hey, when the sinners are casting down, we will say some for lifting up. Cause we trust in the name of the Lord. Don't make out on me. 
Your voice is Yabo. Let the heavens hear you. Yabo. It means praises come from my heart. Yabo. Praise the Lord. Now, it is time to go into the healing. The Holy Spirit is the one that does the healing. Those of you that are healed already and waiting to hear your testimony, you can start posting your testimony into the group. All the sensations you are feeling and the various healings, the heat, the cold, whatever it is, the shaking. Don't um, keep quiet. Testify immediately to claim your testimony and claim your healing and make it permanent. While heavy that person, I want you to lift up the anointing oil that we prayed upon in the anointing service. I want you to begin to talk to God now and say, Father, as I apply the anointing oil, let your healing happen. Now begin to talk to God. As I apply this anointing oil, God, let healing happen in Jesus' name. No matter how long the sickness has been, wherever the harrow came from, no matter what name the sickness is, no matter what type the sickness is, as I apply the anointing oil, Father, let healing take place. Talk to God now. Let healing take place. Repa sata yendirivo shetirivo repa sata laba repa ba 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 yendirivo soto yetiriba shanta. As I apply this anointing oil, Father, let healing take place now. Let healing take place now. Heal me miraculously. Heal everybody around me. Anybody the oil touches, let healing take place. Talk to God now. Talk to God now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praised. Thank you. Now that we have um, prayed on the oil, I'm going to be praying on the oil from here. We're going to go into another session of worship because worship brings the power of the Holy Spirit in His raw form. I want you to apply the oil in places where you need healing. I want you to apply it in faith. And immediately you apply it, rub it in, begin to do things you cannot do before. Um, I'll, I'll give an example of this. Um, a young girl, a daughter, came for a program. She's asthmatic, and um, people were on the line for healing. And she came out, and I laid hands on her. I asked her, "What is it?" She said, "She's asthmatic." And I said, "Asthmat, go in the name of Jesus." And I told the young girl, "Go outside now, play with dust immediately, because you are healed." Now, she was not the only one on the line. I think that day we had like, maybe like 15 people that came out for healing. And, uh, and as I told the girl, you are healed, go and play with dust. Immediately the girl ran out of the auditorium to go and play with dust. Her thoughts were that were thinking, oh no, it couldn't be as easy as that. You just lay hands, I did not fall down, nothing happened. I don't think I'm healed. They left and went back home, not healed. But the person that trusts God, the little girl that trusts God for her healing, went outside immediately and started playing with dust. She went home and entered the kitchen when they were frying. She started dusting. She played with everything that has dust. Because why? She is healed. Her faith made her whole. Are you a cripple? Once you rub the anointing on the leg, jump up and begin to walk. If you cannot see before, 
open your eyes and see. You cannot hear before. Tell people to start talking to the ear that is not working. I was in the service. I asked people that were not hearing to come out. About four or five came out. And we started speaking to the ear that cannot hear before. And they started hearing because faith followed. Action followed the faith. So as you rub the anointing oil tonight, let action follow your faith. And you will be healed tonight in Jesus' name. So, as we go into another session of worship, begin to rub it in, start doing what you cannot do before. And after, we'll come back and I'll pray the final prayers for the healing to be perfect and permanent in Jesus' name. And if there's any word that God has for us, I will also let us know. Thank you. God bless you. Let's go into worship now. Daddy says that there are some people that they are having some strange pains in the lungs, issues that has to do with lungs and the chest, pains when you swallow, pains when you breathe, pains in the chest, coughs, catar that I refuse to go. The power of God is working on the chest now. Begin to receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I see the power of God working on the head now. I see it working on the head. I see it working on the head. I see ears that have issues beginning to hear well. I, 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 I see a child that cannot speak well and the, the, the tongue the, 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 the speech is being worked on now I see brains 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 somebody is always misbehaving cannot control himself or whoever the person is that I hear or she but I see God working on the brain now I see God working on the brain now I see God working on the brain now I see a high I see a highs that has been said will not see again, beginning to see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see, I see someone that you are having pain in the heart. God is healing the pain now. 
it will be no more. Father God, I thank you. I see God walking in the stomach region. I see God walking in the stomach region. I'm hearing liver. Uh, I'm hearing liver. I'm hearing liver. I'm hearing stomach. Somebody has been having a pain in the stomach for years. And it is coming to an end tonight. It has come to an end already. I see spinal cord. Somebody has continuous pains in the back. You cannot bend. I hear you cannot bend. I hear, I'm asked to tell you to begin to bend now. Begin to bend now. Begin to bend now. I, I, I see a pregnant woman who you were told you are going to have an operation because your pelvic is small. God says, I should tell you that He that created you has just expanded your pelvic. He has just expanded your pelvic. I see somebody, your womb seems to not be in the right place. It seems to have been torn. I, I, I see another one, the, I can see a hole in a womb. A hole in a womb. And no wonder babies do not sleep. These cases have been cured now. In the mighty name of Jesus. This, this, I see, I see, there is a woman, there is a worm in your womb. There is a worm. In your womb that hits conception. There's a womb in your and you have serious painful menstruation. Very serious. The pain is not of this world. The pain is crazy. God says, I should tell you the womb is dead. The womb is dead. The womb is dead. He has been killed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shant of this. Thank you, mighty God. There is a woman. Your ties are so close to one another, you have so much wounds in your ties. Your ties always eat one another so much, it causes so much wound for you. God says it's expanding and making the ties not to touch one another again. I, I, I don't have to explain it, but you, when, when it happens, you will discover that the pain and the wound you used to have has just disappeared. Oh, Father God, we thank you. I see God walking on legs. I see hankus. I see hankus. I see hankus. I see God walking on legs. Someone cannot stand for a long time. You're still. I see someone that is so weak. So weak you cannot stand. So weak. You cannot stand for long. You have just been healed. You have just been healed. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I hear that somebody cannot... You cannot run for a long time. You cannot do running for a long time and you have just been healed. Oh, God will thank you. God will bless you. God will mark the fire. Glory be to your name. Honor be to your name. Oh, God, I've been, I've been, I've been crying to God in my heart for things that have to do with blood. And God just showed me blood vessels. The blood vessels in somebody's body has just been replaced. The blood vessels... The blood vessels have just been replaced. I hear that the generator where blood comes from in the body, that part of the body that generates blood has just been corrected. And it is the right blood cells that will start coming out. Father God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I give you praise. God, I give you honor. Ah, that, that you said there is a woman. You, there, is, there is something that happens to you. You can't control it. Something happens to you. And it has destroyed your marriage totally. And you just can't control it. The power to control it has just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I see a family that is scattered. Husband is different. Wife is different. Children are different. They are all in different places. I am asked to tell you that in three months, God is bringing all of you back together. God is bringing all of you back together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is a man. Your manhood was dead and it has come back to life now. It was dead and it has come back to life now. And, and, and there, there, there are a lot of things happening. There's a, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things. A lot of things. All over the body, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, God is performing wonders. I might not be able to call everything, 
But God is working. God is working on everybody. God is working on everybody. God is working on everybody. Everybody connected with the whole of their heart. God is working. Healing is taking place now. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. I want you to lay your hands on the phone and I will pray for you from here. Uh, because I, I can feel the anointing of God in my hands. So let's transfer it into your phones and you receive it. Oh, Father God, I thank you for the life of everyone that is connected. I thank you for the life of everyone that is connected. I hear that a boy is just ill now. A boy is just ill now. Father God, we thank you for the life of everyone that is connected. Because they are connected tonight, give them their healing in Jesus' name. Because they are connected, Father, give them their healing in the name of Jesus. No matter how long the problem has been in this body, Father, heal tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Father, let your power locate them for healing tonight. In the name of Jesus, let the shock wave of healing go around the world to everywhere they are connected and perform healing. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. 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 God, just tell me, he's dealing with addictions now. There are things you cannot do without, things you are addicted to. Begin to renounce it now and receive your victory. Begin to renounce it now and receive your victory. The power of addiction is broken over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of addiction is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. That person that is always so fearful and is causing high blood pressure in your life, you are healed right now from the spirit of fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Great Pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shant of this. Blessed be your name. Glory be to your name. Honor be to your name. Adoration be to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we seal every prayer prayed tonight with the blood of Jesus. We seal every miracle with the blood of Jesus. Everyone, just like in the time of old, you will heal everyone tonight. Everyone is healed in Jesus' name. Everyone is healed. There's someone with pains in the fingers. You are healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, even in the heart, everything is being healed right now. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your name. Honor be to your name. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Like I said before, the things you cannot do, the things you believe you shouldn't eat, the things you cannot do, begin to do them now in the name of Jesus because you are healed. And your healing is permanent. Nothing can collect this healing from you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. I am waiting to listen to your testimonies. I am waiting to celebrate with you for what God has done. Uh, as you have gotten your healing, begin to thank God, celebrate, and let us hear your testimony. Thank you very much. God bless you. You are free to send this to as many members of your family to let them partake in the anointing service, then they are partaking this one. And um, you are free to use your oil to go and pray for anybody that is sick. It is time to touch the world for Christ. And God will perform miracles through your hand also in Jesus' name. Thank you. Have a very good night. God bless you.